Ok, now we are live. Okay, it's a drive. Ok, Davi, uh, se okay. você quiser, uh, Davi, if you can just talk to the residents while I'm starting to, to share the link, and I will also send the link to Professor Turuasai, and you, you, you can talk to the residents in Brazil speaking about our website and also about uh, Professor channel in YouTube. And so I will just share the link and we can have more people watching this lecture. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hi guys. Uh, this lesson, of course, we are going to speak in English in respect of our dear, dear guest. And just to remember you guys one more time, please subscribe to our channel and comment and participate and click like if you like the, our, our presentation today. Today we invited someone very special. He is a, a professor from Shiga University in Japan. He's a very prolific author. He writes a lot about uh, coronary revascularization, mit mitral valve plexes, mm -hmm. and several other subjects. But today we invited him to talk about arterial grafts. And right now with us is Dr. Toru Asai from Japan. If you so, feel free to start. Yeah. yeah. Just before Professor speak, I, I wish I, I could just say some words to, to Professor. First of all, uh, as David said, we, we are very glad to have you with us. I just share you, the link to your email if you want to share. You free, you feel comfortable to, to have some minutes or some seconds to share in your Facebook. We can wait for it. Okay, maybe let me try. Yeah, yeah, sure. This is early in the morning in Japan, as you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody pretty yeah, yeah. busy, probably. That's, uh, we'll see, yeah. Okay. I'm also sharing here in some WhatsApp groups and on my Facebook. You are very advanced in technology. No, <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> I'm just learning. The best is David. David is the best. No. Our mentor is Diego. Is, is Diego online today or no? No, I think Diego is doing the ACLS tri uh, oh. treatment. So okay. uh, today he's busy. He, he will not be with us. Okay. Okay, okay just one uh, more. I minute. can just glance. Christmas tree in your back. Yeah. 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 My <laughs> wife. My wife, she loves Christmas tree. So <laughs> we, we started a little bit earlier. Yeah. No, I, I didn't put anything in mind yet. Maybe later. Yeah. In Brazil, we start to put some Christmas tree around, around the beginning of December and the end of November, some places. Okay. Just one more second. Watch this. Watch live. Okay. I'm a little bit slow for the technology. Yeah. Okay. Like a uh, younger colleague like you. <laughs> yeah, nice. So, uh, I think I'm pretty much ready. I think I put the share at uh, Okay, some trouble of uh, see. I can share in your page here in in Facebook. Okay. You've been doing. You can put a uh, okay. Watch like this, something like this. Let me see. Lecture live. Okay, I pu published in your Facebook page. Okay, great. Okay, so guys. Uh, good night, everyone, and good morning, everyone that is in Japan right now. 
So maybe we, this is actually Wednesday night. You maybe get tired of walking in the hospital. Yes. I just contain some video and uh, more easy things and skip skip about uh, too many about abandoned uh, evidence based medicine. So hope you enjoy that lecture. Okay, okay. go Should ahead. Start. Yeah. Let me just put the first slide. Okay. Remember to share your your screen first. Yeah. Okay. Can you see this slide? No, no. Okay. First, you go to the second link in the upper left part upper, of the live upper left. Okay. Yes. Which chat? Uh, okay. Okay. Perfect. Did I do it? Yeah. Uh, correct? Correct. Now, how about this? Can you see it? Yeah, perfect. Very nice. Okay. All right. So let me start. Uh, okay. Today's topic is arterial graft for uh, cabbage. Cabbage procedure is most commonly done in cardiac surgery, surgery operation theater. Uh, I, I assume in in uh, Brazil. Marcio, let me ask you about how much percentage of uh, operation is for uh, ischemic heart disease in your institution or in your country? Yeah, I can say in my institution uh, per year it's around. Let let me see. I think it's around. 400 i'm not so sure but i think it's maybe a little bit more than 400 okay. and, 400. and uh percentage of uh, cabbage among these cardiac surgery is about 40 percent 50 percent yeah no sorry i mean uh 500 just cabbage and oh. maybe 1000 procedure cardiac procedure per year something like this so that means the plenty of procedures still exist. Sure. Even sure. in a drug eluting stent error. Yeah. Correct. Right. So, okay. This is uh, one of the picture who had aortic valve surgery seven years after my operation of cabbage or arterial graft of CABG. This was a study a CT angiogram uh, prior to the valve surgery. Seven, even seven years after uh, arterial coronary revascularization, which you, you saw this, this right ITA to LED, left ITA to diagonal and marginal, and the gastroepiproic to the uh, right coronary circulation. If you take a look at the 3D reconstruction, you see native coronary artery is almost uh, gone. However, you see pristine three arterial graft. It's quite, I mean, uh, you don't see any atherosclerosis at all. And that's amazing because a patient who had diabetes or even a I mean, chronic kidney disease who have known to have a progressive atherosclerosis. Patients tend to have uh, good arteries without these atherosclerosis. And these arterial graft is the most important for the, uh, I think, long-term outcome of coronary artery, um, coronary artery disease. This is another picture of my friend who was a bartender in a bar who had a severe coronary artery disease in the age of 45. Patient also had a gastric cancer, which was operated on. So I did not use uh, gastroepiproic artery. However, this left internal mammary artery coming down like this, together with the Y configuration of right internal mammary to the obtuse marginal and the right circulation. 
this arterial graft is just like a uh, mystery, also the miracle for our armamentarium. Let me talk about the effect of CABG. CABG has been developed more than 50 years ago. Let's say nowadays we have a lot of less invasive uh, treatment, such as drug editing stent or uh, some other PCI technique. As you see, this is a, I mean, simple uh, drawing picture. If you see uh, this blue part is the uh, most uh, critical stenosis. The PCI is uh, basically the local treatment putting, uh, you know, um, a state-of-the-art uh, stent which have uh, less stenotic um, material putting in. But few years after, if the atherosclerosis develops further, new region can make occlusion. Then big infection can occur. That is uh, I think it's a typical for the uh, PCI the future if patient have atherosclerotic progression very fast. On the other hand, if you put a lot of PCI, I mean a drug editing stent with long segment coverage like this. Can you see the picture? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. How about this? You may uh you may think that we can cover future culprit region as well. However, these long segment of stent have more dangerous tendency to develop clot, occlusion inside the stent. Also, the branching of the uh, coronary artery is uh, usually uh, having big stenosis at the orifice of the branch. So this cannot be the perfect solution either. Principle of CABG and for the future carpet region is just like this. We are not removing these stenosis. We put another source of uh, blood supply like this. And the future carpet region and the future occlusion with the atherosclerotic development would not stop the territory protection. That is why the big difference in the incidence of uh, myocardial infarction in the future compared to the PCI. So this is only one, even now, the unique intervention to protect the future culprit region event. It's written in Japanese, I'm sorry. It said bypass protect patient from a new infection and cardiac death. I think this is a unique effect. And this is the most important effect of CABG, entirely different from PCI and medication. This is another Japanese containing slide. But if you take a look at this uh, name, Dr. Falk's circulation paper, which is classical, what it shows is uh, patient who develop acute myocardial infarction who had a uh, uh, I think prior angiogram, culprit region was only having mild stenosis. You take a look at this uh, right at most uh, graph. You see 68% of the region was only mild stenosis in a prior casterization. What it means is we cannot predict the future event even though we have a, a, you know, PCI and the latest medication. So CABG is the most important 
for the rapidly progressed severe coronary artery disease. This is the significance of CABD on survival. This is also a classical paper by Dr. Yusuf in 1994. This is a classical but most important article. So I recommend most of the Brazilian residents to read. But this is also very uh, clearly written, nice presentation of a meta-analysis of CABG. But this is a classic study. However, what you see here is a thin line. This is the CABG compared to the bold line of the uh, medical treatment. What do you see from this graph? X-axis is ear, and Y-axis is uh, cumulative mortality. CABG can reduce the, uh, I think, mortality at the year of five years, seven years, and 10 years. You see, mortality reduction is significant at five years, seven years, 10 years. However, we can say the two things. At the first year after randomization, there was some slight, you know, increase of mortality in a CABG group compared to medicine. On the other hand, the effect of CABG lasts a long time, however, winning off after 10 years. CABG cabbage group had higher mortality than medical in the first year, and the effect of CABG seems to be uh, having some redu I mean, reduction as a co-founder. What our society or cardiac surgeon was uh, doing with this art article, what we develop less invasive surgery technique for this uh, drawback of first year post-op. In addition, in order to uh, prolong, I mean, elongate the effect of CABG, we use developed arterial graftings. This is another same picture. CABG is very important, especially for severe coronary artery disease, who has a rapid development. Stent have some effect, especially the good for the acute coronary syndrome, However, ITA or IMA provide the good protection for long term. Can you see the picture well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the reason for the high quality off pump, I just go for a little bit of lecture, then go to the uh, case. This is the STS database, uh, I think presentation by my friend John Pascas, he's saying that low risk for predicted risk of mortality in x-axis you see, there are no change. However, the patients who are very sick, having high risk of mortality preoperatively, see the difference of uh, mortality in the observed mortality. So I think the off pump is important. I don't know how much off pump you are doing in uh, in your institution. I will let me tell you the Japanese we do about two thirds, sixty five percent of all isolated coronary artery done by off pump, and I believe this off pump surgery is a strong, uh, I mean, affinity to the arterial grafting. So let me just briefly talk about my technique of uh, coronary off pump coronary revascularization. The secret is in a pericardium. Pericardium is not attaching to the heart. Heart is attached only the great vessel like, like this. So we can just rotate the heart very gradually to make it stand up. 
what I do is uh, open the pericardium, not like this. This is the typical pericardiotomy for the valve and the aorta, what we do. However, in open surgery, we make more leftward opening and making the left side pericardial retention suture only. That would gradually rotate the heart. Trendrenberg position make a preload stabilized and also just puts a two deep pericardial suture and putting some lap pad behind it and make it stabilize. Hard to naturally rotate. Okay, that is, uh, you, you will see my video later, but this is my basic technique. So let's talk about uh, internal thoracic artery. Why internal thoracic artery? The history of CABG mostly started with saphenous vein graft, as you know. Saphenous vein graft is larger, probably pro providing more blood flow to the whole heart, and saphenous vein have abundant, uh, you know, resources. If we take a look at the internal thoracic artery uh, histology, what we see is uh, different from other arterial conduit, also different from a coronary artery. This is histologically, you see the intima and the media adventitia. There is uh, two elastic lamina, internal elastic lamina and external elastic lamina. What is typical for the uh, internal thoracic artery is uh, there is a very few fenestration, I mean, windows between the intima and the media. Another thing, the media contain a lot of elastic fiber, not just like a smooth muscle cell. This may be as related to the secret of the uh, internal thoracic artery to prevent atherosclerosis. This is the typical things. So in this specimen, this patient with a chronic kidney disease, we tend to have a lot of atherosclerosis all, everywhere. However, you see there's no atherosclerotic region. Only we see some thickening of intima. Intimal hyperplasia, what we call it. Let me skip this. So in that, Intimal hyperplasia can actually occur, and which is, I think, reverse uh, some relation to the uh, glomerular filtration rate. So kidney function is very important uh, to cause the intimal hyperplasia or initial stage of atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis picture is just like this. The process of atherosclerosis started with some uh, injury to the endothelial layer or injury to the intima to start with. Then the next stage, we have some uh, smooth, muscle pro smooth muscle cell proliferation in this layer. They eventually develop lipid core and uh, atherosclerotic uh, plaque. But internal thoracic artery, I would never see the fatty streak and uh, some intimal hyperplasia. However, with this advanced stage of ateroma, fibro ateroma of complication lead, we would not see this uh, progression process in the internal thoracic artery, which is still mysterious. However, this is the most reliable uh, arterial conduit. Now, ITA could be used single or double uh, or no ITA. And uh, I don't talk about the evidence of uh, ITA of uh, uh, CABG, but ITA, we use two mammary artery. 
I think it's more effective in terms of long-term protection of the heart. On the other hand, ITA have a risk of uh, increasing, actually decreasing sternal blood flow, chest wall blood flow, flow uh, eventually cause uh, increased uh, risk of mediastinitis. So what we have developed, not only our group, uh, skeletonization of ITA, preparation of ITA become more and more important. Skeletonization is just like this. ITA will be harvested only with, uh, uh, you know, naked artery. On the other hand, classical harvesting technique having a surrounding tissue of ITA together. There is a lot of advantage of skeletonization. Skeletonization minimizes sternal ischemia and lowers the risk of mediastinitis. Skeletonized ITA becomes longer and also larger in lumen, luminal size larger than the pedicle size, pedicle ones. And most importantly, we can assess the graft flow or graft, uh, you know, uh, physiology more accurately intraoperative. On the other hand, it disadvantage, it is technically demanding and maybe new skill set is required to do a safe harvesting. So our practice predominantly even with our young resident to learn how to take down the mammary, skeletonize carefully. Then we can safely use bilateral ITA. Bilateral ITA is, uh, I think it's uh, gradually, used, I mean, commonly used in our society. However, as you know, in the United States, only five to 10% are it's used. There are a lot of controversy. However, we, we very uh, actively using bi bilateral ITA. The dilemma of two ITA is a right coronary, a light ITA. Right ITA can be used as individual grafting but ITA can only reach LAD or proximal circumflex. So skeletonization makes difference. However, it still have a limitation to reach at the inside to graft. If you make a composite Y grafting, making uh, Rita to Rita, uh, which have, uh, I think it's uh, more coverage of the heart with two mammary artery. However, there's always uh, some uh, question about flow supply is adequate or future, I think, uh, future stringing of the uh, one of the rims. What we most commonly use is the right corner, a right ITA to LED and the left ITA to circumflex and other sequential grafting. This may be unique, and uh, you may not use this for it. This is our article of ITA, two ITA uh, used for the high-risk patient, which is published in the circulation uh, quite a while ago. We had about 800 case isolated CABG, which is mostly off-bone bypass, was divided into the uh, bilateral ITA graftings and uh, CETA grafting. With propensity matching group, long-term outcome, survival free from overall death is significantly better with bilateral ITA or skeletonized arteries. Also, this is a cardiac event-free survival. Bilateral ITA is so reliable. Bilateral ITA is uh, 
a significant better outcome. We have a similar outcome in a chronic kidney disease patient, which is published in the Annual Thoracic. But after RTA is so good. And also diabetic patient as well. So our basic strategy using bilateral ITA, which always skeletonized and mostly off bone bypass surgery. And this is a controversial topic which you may not see in Portuguese or English. This presentation was in uh, Los Angeles Ismics that was uh, six years ago, one of the Japanese group. Composite gr group means composite Y or composite T to making. This is not as good as non-composite, which is the individual com component graph. You see how much difference in eight years, seven years. These red group is not necessarily died. However, composite group have more chance to have a future PCI or revascularization. This is still a controversial area, and many uh, Western people who use the multi arterial graft still using Y grafting or T composite grafting, but that may be uh, closely watched in the follow up. So, our grafting strategy is making, uh, let me just put the picture. You see the left uh, circulation to the LAD in the circumflex and the right coronary artery coming this. What I put is the right ITA to the LAD, which I don't make any composite or uh, sequential uh, arrangement, such as complicated. I, LAD is the most important vessel, which we always make uh, individual independent anastomosis to the inside to ITA, one of ITA, right ITA or left ITA. And make a circumflex circulation or even a diagonal circulation we cover. Second important vessel or maybe third, we make a left ITA to sequential bypass. Left ITA can cover the most distal part of circumflex even sometimes so the right circulation. And if the patient have a severe, severe means more than 95% stenosis, subtotal occlusion or total occlusion of the right coronary artery, we make a bypass, something like this, with the right gastroepiploic artery. Something like this. We, okay, this is the total artery revascularization for our graft ar arrangement. So, one may care this uh, right internal memory going to the LAD may be scary because the reoperation to the median sternotomy may not be safe. But we cover, we make some. Uh, uh, entrance at the side of the mediastinum. So two ITA is safely covered with the mediastinal fat. So we can safely open the sternum. This is another article of the uh, our group, which reoperative median sternotomy following the use of right internal mammary crossing midline. We had a seven patient, only 1.1% incidence. However, there's no re revascularization. Mostly aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation, or aortic surgery. But these patients all safely open the cover with the mediastinal fat. It can be just uh, preoperatively, precisely assess and safely perform the operation. So no graft injury occurs so far in our experience. 
which can be safely performed. I think there are so many pictures. Oh, this, uh, this, I think this is repetition. I'm sorry, just to skip this. And uh, you may not use uh, gastroepiploic artery, which I presented in a European meeting. Just let me just explain this gastroepiploic artery. Which is largely abandoned in the Western society, it is unforgotten, a uh, forgotten or underrated graft. However, we know this skeletonized right gastroepiploic artery makes a sim significantly larger and spasm free conduit. And we just presented, uh, this is my own method to harvest GA. Long term outcome this is a patency result of eight years. Uh, this is uh, some selected patient with CT angio follow up. However, we see 90.2% in eight years patency, which is a lot better than the pedicle GA or saphenous vein graft. Our graft patency in one year is something like this. Patency rate is quite good in the arterial conduit and saphenous vein slightly less. However, we have had a quite satisfying outcome. This is what you saw in the long term. You see these uh, good arterial conduit making a cabbage effect uh, prolonged for more than 10 years. So, uh, until then, you know, uh, this is our experience, not, uh, you know, general evidence-based medicine these days. Uh, you may be interesting, interested a little bit. Can I go to the video? Please. Okay. Let me just go to the video. That's uh, one of the pictures. This video demonstrates our technique of off-pump. Can you hear the sound? Using yeah. I do arterial graft. Introduction. Skeletonization is an advanced technique of graft harvesting in CRBG. It has many advantages but requires meticulous attention. We have made it a simple technique using harmonic scalpel. This video represents our detailed technique of skeletonization of arterial grafts and opcap exclusively using these in situ grafts. Skeletonization of internal thoracic artery, ITA, can minimize sternal ischemia and lower the risk of mediastinitis. Skeletonized ITA is longer and larger than pedicle ITA. A harmonic scalpel makes this technique easy, quick, and secure. Skeletonization of the right gastroepiploic artery, GEA, not only prevents special spasm, but also leads to GEA dilatation. It facilitates inspection and makes sequential anastomosis easy. We have invented a simple technique for harvesting skeletonized GEA. Our method of GEA skeletonization has only three technical steps. The first step is to pass thin vessel loops under GEA at 5 cm intervals. The second step is to unloop the tissue surrounding the GEA. The last step is to seal and sever all the branches together with soft tissue. <coughs> A 61-year-old diabetic male presented with severe triple vessel coronary artery disease despite of Multiple PCI. You see, this patient had already six coronary artery stent. However, the new uh, symptom developed one year after the last stenting. Only one year. Only one year. So uh, we don't know that's uh, how much uh, stenting uh, technology is prevailing in Brazil and South Africa, as uh, South America. But we are, we are so many PCIs suffering. We have many, many sick patients. 
you may see there's some stenting in this angiogram in LED or other branches. Angiogram demonstrated severe stenosis in a proximal LED and the proximal circumflex artery. The first diagonal was diffusely diseased and the second diagonal was totally occluded. The right coronary angiogram showed occlusion of PDA and the other distal stenosis in AV branch. He was referred for CFBG. A median sternotomy was extended about 5 cm caudally from the diaphragm process. Prior to harvesting ITAs, the peritoneal cavity was opened vertically and the GA was inspected and palpated to confirm it as a suitable conduit. Let me comment briefly. This, this patient does not have big uh, median uh, lapalotomy. Instead, I cut diaphragm all the way down to the liver attachment of the diaphragm. So there, this is uh, what you see. Then we started to harvest the left ITA. The endothoracic fascia was inside using cautery about five millimeters medial to the internal thoracic vein. As the fascia pulled down with forceps, the vein was exposed using a cautery tip without activating it. Can you see the picture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The under surface of the internal thoracic vein was clearly exposed and the ITA became visible. The vein and ITA were gently separated by the tip of the cautery, still without activating it. The trunk of ITA can be separated from the chest wall gradually. The perforating branch was naturally exposed to view and cut. The harmonic scalpel with the dissecting hook was then used. It has a unique ability to cavitate fat tissue. The soft tissue and the fascia were removed from the ITA with activated tip of the harmonic scalpel. Do you have the mammary artery? Yes. <laughs> I think the most important aspect is identify the branches and safely treat. Skeletonization, you may injure uh, the hematoma of the artery, also the branch, uh, you know, uh, branch injury. That should be carefully avoided. While the ITA was gently pulled down using curved debating forceps, surrounding tissue was separated from the ITA with activated tip of harmonic scalpel. At the proximal area, the vein was clipped and divided, and the ITA was clearly visible. The median steiner and the skeleton Next, the right ITA was harvested in the same way. Starting with incision of the fascia, the undersurface of the vein was exposed. The vein and the ITA were separated by the cautery tip. This technique naturally exposed small ITA branches. Care should be taken not to injure any branches of the ITA. The harmonic scalpel is useful to treat small branches of ITA.
by applying the activated tip gently for a few seconds. It induces protein coagulation and seals the cut surface safely. You can perform the same operation with that harmonic scalpel. I mostly use the erector cautery, and uh, probably you do the same way. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's a very important step for the uh, delicate technique of CABG. Flat quality, we always uh, take quality the of right idea all the way to the level of the right cell. All branches were securely divided in the same way. A small laparotomy was extended into the diaphragm in the midline to the attachment of the liver. This extension greatly facilitates the GEA harvest as well as the opcat procedure. The GEA was harvested in a skeletonized fashion using the harmonic scalpel with a coagulating sears tip. The first step of this centimeter intervals. The anterior layer of the greater omentum was incised using a cautery. Soft tissue between the GEA and its satellite vein was carefully undermined using mosquito forceps, and only the artery was encircled with a rubber vessel loop. This was carried out through the entire necessary length from the level of pyrolus. between the vessel loops. The tissue packed jaw of the sears were inserted from the heat during the use of harmonic scalpel. With this step, GEA was exposed throughout its entire length. When we occasionally encounter a mental thick with adipose tissue, we clear away fat around the GEA. By stroking it gently with activated tip of the harmonic scalpel, the GEA gives off thin walled gastric and omental branches. The next step then was to seal and sever all the branches together with soft tissue. By gently pulling up the vessel loop, the whole surrounding tissue were detached by coagulating seals approximately two millimeter away from the GEA. During this section, we rarely encounter bleeding from the satellite vein or any other vessels. The whole skeletonization of the GEA took 10 minutes in this case, without injuring the arterial trunk. The diluted myrinone solution was instilled in it and hemoclip was applied. The GEA was then wrapped in a papaverine soaked sponge. With these preparations, the GEA later became a maximally dilated arterial conduit. The GEA was brought anteriorly to the pyrolus and the liver through the vertical incision of the diaphragm to reach the heart. The left and the right ITAs were divided and prepared in the same fashion.
two deep pericardial sutures of zero PDS were placed for the heart positioning. We so Mauricio, this is a long video, but uh, I think it's uh, pretty much I could see, I could show you that uh, I think it's a technical detail of uh, how to harvest uh, skeletonite inside to conduit, to reconduit. No, Did you have any uh, comment or uh, any questions so far? No, we don't have any questions so far. You can, you can move on. So very nice videos. Oh, you like it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I will go on. Decision of a few centimeters. You uh, see, at this point, what I'm doing is uh, making a, a small two finger breath hole uh, parallel to the uh, right phrenic nerve, just in front of SVC and aorta. There is a window for the right ITA to enter into the pericardial space. And anterior to the SBC was made in the right upper part of the pericardium to respond into the pericardial space. What's the size of the hole? Hmm? What's the size of the hole in the pericardium that you do for the right uh, internal thoracic artery? Right internal thoracic artery I commonly use for in situ. So I make a hole about one to two centimeter anteriorly to the uh, uh, right phrenic nerve. Nice. So lateral aspect of the mediastinal fat tissue, and uh, that would uh, make uh, protection of the right mammary artery. Uh, in other words, I can put the tissue between the lateral sternum uh, to the pericardial space. Nice. Which is, a, I think, the secret to safe uh, configuration. The skeletonite inside the right ITA was used for this target site. We used neither composite vessel nor sequential grafting for the LAD. ITA is always used for the LAD in an individual graft fashion. In this case, it was a 2.0 millimeter vessel with mildly thickened arterial wall. The intracoronary shunt of 2.0 millimeter was introduced. A 7 proline running suture was used. One of the beauty of off-pump surgery is uh, we don't we we are very accurate in terms of uh, length and you know course of the arterial graft because heart is not empty heart is working and also the uh, in the natural position so ITA even a saphenous vein length is uh, we can measure accurately I believe. Fibrous tissue around the skeletonized right ITA was fixed on the surface of the heart to avoid twisting or kinking. This is important for the skeletonization. If even even though you have a good arterial conduit, if you twist it at the site of the heel of the anastomosis, that will be stenotic. Also, kinking should be carefully avoided. To making sure it's not twisted. Nice. And the way always the graft flow was assessed by transit time flowmetry following each anastomosis construction. This graft showed adequate flow. The next
I think that graph assessment nowadays, modern CAVG is quite important. And uh, this is actually common practice in our country. I'm not certain about the, uh, your country, but uh, we can discuss it's later. Target was the first diurnal branch. It had tight diffuse stenosis. The skeletonized left RTA was grafted in a side-to-side -side fashion. As I said before, yeah. that's, uh, this left mammary artery used for two uh, distal anastomosis. So one for the side-to-side -side anastomosis to the first diagonal, and uh, end to side anastomosis to the anastomosis was arranged in second diagonal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A seven knot protein was used. If you use the right memory to the LED, we have more freedom to cover the rest of the circulation of the left coronary artery by left ITA. We can sometimes use diagonal to the marginal, or marginal to marginal, or the ramus to the diagonal. We can have a lot of freedom to use more than two anastomoses. And you tried uh, the right internal thoracic artery for the... Second flex. Yes. For the marginal, for the marginal. But I would say if you can use either from the posterior aspect of the uh, mm -hmm. uh, aorta, transverse sinus. Yeah. It may be uh, the ramus intermed in ramus or the proximal marginal, but not that much distal part. Yeah. And I personally, do not like too much that configuration because we do not see the whole course of the vessel if it is twisted or kinked after i mean uh, behind the aorta or pulmonary artery it may be difficult that's true so uh maybe that's a, one of the reason uh bilateral memory especially bilateral inside to memory it's not commonly used it's so tedious, and uh, I think it's, I mean, very stressful for most of the surgeon. So that's, I think, how we use mammary artery. This is the endless discussion, the controversy, past 20 years. But I switched the mind, I mean, uh, right mammary, it's as equally good for the LED. So that's around this freedom. <clears throat> so step by step, this this video contains five anastomoses. I will just skip a little bit. So I put the one and uh, good we have advantage pattern. using this confirmation. The so each anastomosis we check. Grafted with the end of the left ITA. And this the second, second diagonal branch was a totally occluded vessel and barely visible. You see, but this is very miserable uh, diffusory disease vessel. However, this second diagonal has a very broad uh, area of myocardium to cover. That is why I just went for it. The target site was only 1.2 millimeter in diameter. It was grafted with the left ITA without shunting. Professor, yes. And how long do you take in a surgery like that? Uh, uh, in a five five grafts. Five graft, maybe four to five hours. From it's skin to skin. Hours. Four hours. Yeah, well, no. it is. It's quite uh, tedious work. <laughs> yeah. If you want to finish earlier, I, you can take a, maybe saffron's vein to make a sequential grafting. The skeletonized GA was used for the PDA and oh, the posterior lateral branch. Before finishing, I wanted to take artery. a look at uh, the PDA had become totally occluded. Reliable in the big the side to side conduit. anastomosis between GA and PDA was constructed in diamond fashion. Professor? Yes. How, how do you pass this GEA 
through the 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 diaphragm for for the the the, the heart to do the anastomosis okay uh, as i showed you before briefly uh diaphragm hemi diaphragm it's uh, you know uh, there is a how do i say i make vertical incision yeah so diaphragm. i mean central fibrous portion yeah vertically all the way down okay then after finishing this anastomosis we approximate uh, the di diaphragm by heavy sutures you will see later okay okay a coronary so bypass as the bypass the conduit branch of the circumflex artery was grafted with the end of gea this posterior branch was a previous this is the circumflex, distal circumflex branch, which have stenosis. And look at this uh, gastroepiploic, uh, uh, I mean, stump, huge stump, Basically still exists. Large vessels. But with news, the anastomosis was constructed in end to side fashion. All anastomosis were completed in hemodynamically stable condition with no arrhythmia. We have kept systolic blood pressure over 80 millimeters mercury throughout the procedure with no antropic agent, no pressor medications, no epinephrine, epinephrine or dobutamine has never been necessary in the intraoperative management of our opcap procedures. All anastomosis showed no bleeding. No additional suture was needed. So even uh, inside to at the recorder, we can use the a lot of the fluorescence imaging study. Spy demonstrated excellent graft flow from the GEA into the PDA. Very nice image. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know so how much IPA common that uh, this kind of a luxury graft uh, assessment procedure. Or we just take advantage of using it. Yeah. Maybe uh, expensive in Brazil. I don't know. You can say the. Yeah, it's a little expensive. I only so, never saw it done. Now we can Prior officially reimburse these uh, graft confirmation procedure in addition to bypass procedure. You understand? If we do this, we can get more money from the government. Okay, yeah. This is more common for us. The LED was assessed next. Showed over 30 millimeters per minute. You know, I can talk about the graft assessment for the one hour, but uh, I just skip for it. And the good but we see good diastolic filling. Yeah, this is the the approximating diaphragm. Closed with yeah. to leave and also the closed uh, peritoneum the and uh, just. Uh, the peritoneum was. Closed with the same continuous. Suture. This video actually, I'm trying to show better. So you see, some uh, vertical cut of the uh, diaphragm still remain yeah. in some, making sure it's not kink or it's not okay. twist graft. Okay, Th that that was my point. I was afraid yeah. to to a uh, very small hole, and and we have a. Uh, yeah. Right. Point, yeah. Also, before the patient discharge, we have a luxury doing a CT confirmation. The right ITA to LED, the left ITA to the first diagonal and the second diagonal branches, and the GEA to the PDA and the posterolateral branch of circumflex artery. All graphs were proven patent. 
summary. So that's uh, I think pretty much the video, the finish. I think it's a long video. Thank you for your patience to take a look at it. I mean, a lot of uh, detailed uh, technical uh, aspect in this, this procedure. And it is, Marcio, I think this is interesting. CABG has been done more than 60 years. But uh, let's say 10 surgeons uh, 10 surgeons perform 10 different way of uh, doing it, depending on the patient condition, age, uh, comorbidity, or some are young patient, some are quite, uh, you know, uh, comorbid with diabetes, uh, chronic kidney disease. So I think it's, uh, this is the uh, most uh, interesting part of the cardiac surgery still. And also, detailed technique is very delicate in some part, and that techniques makes difference still. Don't you agree? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, we agree for sure. So, yeah. but uh, you know, my procedure may not be uh, that common, but if you think about good indication to start with, let's say young patient or diabetic uh, or chronic kidney disease even and uh, severe coronary artery disease then we can have a freedom of uh, uh, arterial graft uh, role however we have to think about contraindication slightly for example um, only mildly stenotic coronary artery is not a good uh, uh, target for the arterial conduit radial artery i didn't talk about today but gastroepiploic artery if you have uh, only uh, i mean patient have only 50 percent or 60 percent stenosis in a huge right coronary artery we still use saphenous vein graft because flow competition, arterial graft, it's not doing well. So that's uh, pretty much the point of the today's lecture. I think I sp spoke uh, too much, almost one hour or even more. You may have some question or a discussion. Thank you for yeah. your patience. Thank you for your attention. No, you, you didn't talk too much. The, the, the class was great. We do have one question from Juan Luis from the yeah. uh, the Hospital North Paranaense, and he asks about the the use of the gastroepiploic artery, yes. and if if the if its use would increase the incidence of pericarditis or metastasitis, okay. as it increases as it creates a communication between the peritoneal and the mediastinal cavities okay thank you for a good question uh with our experience of uh, 600 cases so far uh ga use is not related to the mediastinal infection as well as uh, uh intra-abdominal complication okay however occasionally in the future of the deed patient, if patient develop gastric cancer or some need of uh, abdominal surgery, the care should be taken. That can be done. However, general surgeons should get uh, the exact information of the uh, this graft arrangement. There was an accident in Japan a long time ago. Uh, general surgeon, without knowing, they cut the graft conduit in a laparoscopic surgery that became a suit, low suit. So if it is not common, it is uh, nice for you to follow up the patient uh, periodically. If patient needs some abdominal surgery, you have to let them know. But in terms of a perioperative complication, that the GA is quite free also, we can start oral diet, I mean, regular diet, the day after surgery. They can eat. Uh, uh, during the lecture, uh, I noted that you made a comment about 
not using the GA because the the, the patient had a, a, gra a gastric disease, but I didn't kind quite catch it which disease. Okay, okay. professor. Yes. Uh, please, uh, can you just uh, stop the sharing in the, in the same button, just for us to see you speaking? Okay. Uh, how can I do it? You you just click on the same link uh, in the upper left part, the green link. The green link. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Now we can see you. Yeah. That's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think there are a lot of. Uh, um, I gave a lecture in a European meeting in Milan. I think it's a Marcel, maybe. I was uh, in terms of gastroenterology, it's not common in the Western world yet. But I would say that uh, make sure you use proximal, very proximal part of the uh, gastroepiploic to harvest, not only distal part. Gastroepiploic artery is a huge artery. All general surgeons know, but our cardiac surgery training, if you don't do uh, too much gastro, I mean, uh, gas, gas, I mean uh, general surgery, we don't know. I think the uh, initial mistake is uh, just harvesting very distal part, which is the most commonly uh, developed spasm or shrinking. Then the proximal part is uh, immune from uh, vessel spasm more, and we have an uh, entirely larger lumen. So make sure you feel the pyrolysis of the uh, stomach and it just get the right uh, good part of the gastroepiploic. Otherwise, we don't need any uh, uh, anti-spasmodic medication like radio artery. So that's... Uh, can you hang on a second? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah really decide the longevity of the bypass. Uh, if you use ITA very commonly, uh, try to obtain the good detailed technique of a good skeletonization technique. That makes, uh, I think, uh, decrease incidence of mediastinitis which we have many, many articles from uh, all around the world these days. Also, the uh, skeletonized artery can be assessed interoperatively easily. Also, the uh, uh, sequential grafting, also the size of arteries, uh, I think, is much more, uh, I think, it's available for many aspects. Uh, professor, I have another question. I don't know if you still have time. Yes. Okay. I have, so, I have plenty of time today. Oh, oh. nice. <laughs> it feels well. A uh, nice day. So I have a I have a question of uh, from a staff of my hospital. Yes. He's yes. asking. Uh, he's asking you about radial artery. What radial. do you think about radial artery? His name is Antonio, Doctor Antonio Flavio. He's saying good morning for you, and he's asking this about radial artery. Obrigado. Yeah. <laughs> radial artery is now commonly used in many institutions, including Japan, all around the world. And a friend of mine, Mario Gaudino, uh, published a very good article in a New England Journal in this year. Radial artery, if you use properly, that is very a good armamentarium to prolong the effect of a CABG. I have used radial artery uh, quite a few about 20 years ago. But nowadays I don't use because two memory, if we routinely use two memory like this video together with the gastroepiploic artery, 
there's no room for the radio artery to use. Then we have more and more severe uh, kidney disease. CKD is a very common population for our CABG uh, practice. And uh, advanced stage of uh, CKD patient uh, eventually need the arterial venous shunt to the arm. So we avoid using it. Another controversy is uh, nowadays cardiac catheterization done by radio artery approach. I'm not certain that the artery used for the catheterization may affect the quality of uh, radio artery. As I'm not denying the radio artery, but I cannot simply say a detailed point because I'm not using a radio artery these days. Okay, and uh, we also have a question of a resident in Brazil. Yes. Uh, Gabriela, she's asking, uh, what about safenosine? Do you still think that we still, do you think that we still have space for it? And if you think so, mm -hmm. what do you think about the no-touch technique? Okay, that's a very important question. First of all, um, in my practice, saphenous vein is used in 50% of patients still. This video is a typical for total arterial revascularization. Uh, this is for the patient who uh, is young, also who need to expect to live 10 years, 20 years. Uh, but saphenous vein have uh, advantage especially for the patient who have cardiogenic shock or very bad hemodynamics with bad heart. These kind of patients have, tend to have hypotension, low blood pressure uh, during or after surgery. These complicated bad heart, uh, I think it still benefit from a uh, saphenous vein because saphenous vein graft uh, does not cause any flow uh, reduction in uh, low blood pressure. So I think it's a deteriorating heart failure with, uh, uh, you know, multiple uh, target vessel. I think saphenous vein is re very much reliable. Another good point of saphenous vein is uh, I think saphenous vein, a it's not affected by the degree of uh, stenosis. You understand? So moderately yeah. stenotic, let's say right coronary artery, we still need to be careful how we use uh, fixed conduit. Radio artery is not doing well with 60% of stenosis of right coronary artery gastroepiproic either. So arterial conduit still have some uh, condition to use. Saphenous vein graft is uh, very, uh, how do you say, versatile. So I think saphenous vein is still having an important role for the cor coronary artery bypass. In terms of a non-touch saphenous vein, that's become more common and common in Japan. I personally, haven't used it, honestly. I think uh, my question to the saphenous vein uh, non-touch technique is, uh, I think, uh, I think five years or ten years after surgery, non-touch technique is really not developing atherosclerosis in a late stage, which I think we still don't have uh, much evidence yet. So I will wait. Don't touch saphenous vein. Uh, we, need to take, uh, we need to be very careful in terms of leg infection or leg in the problem. So if you do properly and you have a certain amount of uh, non-touch saphenous vein, make sure you follow up patient uh, closely, especially in the midterm and the long term.
if it doesn't develop atherosclerosis like uh, conventional old fashioned surface vein, that would be a miracle. But in my impression, surface vein is surface vein. If used for the arterial conduit, it may develop some uh, atherosclerosis in the future. I'm not certain. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, Davi can help me. But I believe that uh, Professor Mario Galdino uh, from Brazil, but he is mm -hmm. actually working in Sweden and mm -hmm. he's so publishing cool. some data about about uh, saphenectomy in a no touch approach. And maybe his follow up now it's around 10 years. I'm not sure if this is already published, but he I has some good results. It's this uh, evidence will coming up uh, near future within a yeah, few years. Yeah. Any I, that I, I, I think it's Dr. Domingo Souza, isn't that? Yes. Is that oh, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Domingo Souza, I, I yeah. said. Yeah. Yeah. Mario Mar Gaudino works in New York. In New York, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's magic, Renat. It's interestingly, uh, I think it's. Uh, the pay, I mean, the graft flow is limited. If graft flow is limited either by a small territory area of myocardium or uh, less stenotic region, but toughness vein tend to make a clot in an early possible period. But arterial graft becoming, uh, you know, uh, arterial graft tend to have auto regulation to make this caliber smaller. You are, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, because uh, because of our experience of angiogram by ourselves, since when I, when I was young like you, I, what I was doing is uh, scrubbing in operation Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And Tuesday and Thursday, we were doing cardiac catheterization by surgeon. That we do our own bypass confirmation angiogram by ourselves. So we know the arterial graft uh, vary uh, their caliber size depending on the uh, necessity. Typhenous vein. Uh, is wide open uh, all the time. However, yeah. I agree with Dr. S Professor Souza uh, that I mean too much compression to the vein harvesting is not doing anything good. So make it just a naturally inside to natural pressure. That I agree. I, I, I completely agree with that. Intimal injury. Intimal injury of the saphenous vein really causing big problem. Endothelial layers are almost lost in the harvesting. So I think how to deal with uh, these uh, most common conduit in saphenous vein it's uh, still important. There's still many things to investigate. I agree, and we do use saphenous vein as well. Yeah. Uh, for example, in Brazil, I think uh, we most part of the time we just use saphenous vein and and left internal thoracic artery. Most part That's of the time, common procedure. Yeah, yeah, for not sure. video procedure for every single patient. <laughs> yeah, for sure, we we have a lot of places that they use the right mammary or they use radio artery, but maybe just a few places in Brazil, it's a huge country, uses the gastroepiploic artery. So we hope to to encourage them to, to use it more and to, to feel comfortable to try these skills and these tips that you gave us today. Now uh, we have have advantage to take a look at these uh, you know uh, Google Hangout 
as well as a lot of uh, uh, uploaded video online. And uh, you may know my site of uh, YouTube contains some technical videos, which I see many surgeons in Asia, Thailand or Vietnam, Malaysia, they, a younger surgeon like you, just uh, speaking to me. Are you Dr. Asai? I've been watching that video every single time before scrubbing in. <laughs> just to do a mammary artery harvest. I think, ma I think mammary artery harvest is a good start, but, uh, you know, with my lecture, if you get interested in other aspect of, uh, I mean, arterial conduit, also the precise uh, preparation may make difference. That would be my pleasure. For sure. We will share your YouTube channel. And when we, we told the guys, the other residents, that you would be the, the, the professor that would give the lecture for us today, uh, we shared your YouTube channel. And some, some residents, they already knew your YouTube channel. They said, yeah, this, this channel is amazing. His lectures are very nice. We like some videos. And so now you are, you are becoming more and more famous in Brazil, Professor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. In future, in the near future, I'd like to visit you in Brazil. For sure. See many you, you, you will be here. Videos. Okay. Yeah. yeah I uh, also, okay. I would I just uh, try yes. to... David? Yes, uh, we just talked about the the, the YouTube channel. Uh -huh. This is the YouTube channel that we were talking about. Yes. Yes, please, everyone subscribe. You already have like almost 2,000 subscriptions. And Ooh. maybe 200 like, more. 200 more will be from our Brazilian residents in the near future. Yeah. I can many... I. I can have many topics, controversy to discuss with you in this uh, fantastic platforms. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in other topics, mitral valve or, uh, you know, life threatening ventricular septal rupture. Yes. Nice. Or, you know, aortic surgery. Nice. Okay. We, yeah, we'll, sure. we'll try to schedule that as soon as possible <laughs> for sure and it's it's a it's a nice time like if yeah, it's yeah. a good day for you it's a morning for you it's it's nice for us it's not too late here maybe it's too, too early for you i think that it's a perfect connection between brazil and japan yes it's way easier than europe and other countries yeah for yeah. sure it's italy is pretty local. much harder yeah I really appreciate this opportunity and uh, I, I was so surprised how lucky I could meet you in the San Rafael Hospital. The oh. yeah, it is. I, I, I am lucky. I didn't expect. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I just spent two days in, in San Rafael and in the first day I saw a paper in the wall uh, and in the paper uh there was there was written that you would be uh presenting a lecture in the next day so i took a picture of the paper and sent to my to to the guys in my hospital saying that you will be in the same hospital that i that i was uh in, in a soon time and i was very glad when i met you i met not only a good professor but also now a good friend a good friend that I, I have a nice opportunity to meet and to talk. And now we are sharing and we are learning from your all, all your knowledge. And it's very nice, very nice to meet a person like you that make us young residents to believe in the future of our speciality, you know? Because yeah. uh, you have a lot to show and you could just hide this for you, but you it's you just show this to everyone for free and this is amazing that's why we believe in the future in the cardiac surgery yeah i just shot a message to the old brazilian region 
you know, uh, all your patients relying on you and for the desperate situation. And we need to be the best of the best for the patient, for your patient, and make patient happy. And uh, that is our mission as a cardiac surgeon. So we keep making progress, find that, and uh, br bring up the, our own technique higher and uh, prove it is useful. Uh, this is a great opportunity. I really enjoy it. Thank you very much. Yeah, today was at SUSAX. We had 73 residents participating and watching our videos. And we hope to, the end of the week, we can double that in, on YouTube. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Have a nice uh, Christmas and uh, New Year's. Uh, and you too. Seeing you in the near future again. Okay. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a, nice day. Bye -bye. Have a good one. Ciao. Obrigado. Obrigado.